I think the struggle for freedom and human rights in Iran and the whole region, particularly in Iran, is going back for quite a long time. When I was born in 1974, uh, my father was uh, in the prison because of writing some articles. At the time, he was a leftist activist and writer. And as you can see, this struggle continues up to this. Right now, there are people in prison because of what they write, they express their opinion. So we had to go to exile during end of 70s. Uh, we came to United States, to California, and then among other leftists when the revolution of 1979, uh, when it was the time of revolution, we got back to Iran because my father had, and a lot of leftist activists, they had this utopia of now with the fall of Shah, and uh, ally of United States, they can create their utopia. So they were among the first victims. Uh, ten thousands of leftist activist communists has been massacred by Khomeini as soon as he got to the power. So I think that the, the whole country, the, the politics was kind of suppressed for something like two decades. There was simply no way to express very basic of your opinion. At the end of 90s, uh, with with election of uh, President Khatami, there was a very small, narrow window that people started to criticize the system, and there was free press. That time was the time of my uh, politicization, and I became an activist and journalist. I was working with dozens of reformist papers. Most of them have been shot down by Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader. Journalists have been arrested. Some of them have been killed. Uh, and a lot of others, they, they just left the country. They are living in the United States, in, in, in France. Uh, but still, there are a lot of activists of my generation still in Iran struggling, many of them in prison, facing jail terms up to 20 years, uh, continuing their fight for freedom. Well, I was never a free journalist, if, if you take the, 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 this Western idea of free journalism into the context, but for Iran, which there was not, not even a word of criticizing the whole establishment, if you can criticize a school principal, this is kind of free journalism. And this was, this was just a very, very tiny, narrow window at the start that we all hoped that it would, by the time it will grow up, grow more, but the system was so horrified. I was, I remember I was a technical uh, student at, at the University of Tehran. I was studying computer software. Uh, at the same time, I was very interested in social science. I was very interested in history, social anthropology, political sociology, and, and stuff like that. So I was going to the, to the school to attend the classes for, for these subjects, and then you know, mixing the computer and the whole this digital era, and the, the, the first, the very first days of internet in Iran, which at that time, that was not a threat for government because no one had any idea what's internet. At, when first it appeared, we were using some very basic equipments like nine, nine kilobyte modems, uh, using phone lines. There was no World Wide Web. There was BBS that people were connecting, so I came with a friend of mine, uh, his name is Mr. Akbar Musavi. He became later a member of parliament in the time of reform. He's living in Washington, D.C. right now. We got this idea that the Khatami was fresh elected president. We connect him through the BBS to, to, to online internet users. And I think that the whole number of users in whole Iran was something like 500 people. But the, this idea later became the, 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 the whole, you know, the current of this digitized reform movement in Iran. From this whole idea, a lot of websites has been made, a lot of networks have been established. Uh, when I'm talking about that, this is this is five years before the first blog appeared. It's 10 years before Twitter. It's 15 years before Facebook. It, 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 it's such a long time ago, but I'm really proud of you know seeing the things at that time from this perspective. and. I was thinking, what's the, the, the point of a totalitarian paranoid uh, regime is first to limit access of citizens to, to free 
follow of information uh, to, to, to spread their own agenda because they are totalitarian. And then about political paranoia, they need this kind of inaccurate, paranoid news that coming, putting question to everything. So if we can establish channels of people access to the, to the accurate news, then they can test, the, uh, they, can, they, can, they can evaluate whether what government said, what statistic or what claims they make, is it true or not? And uh, I, I got to this point, let's say 20 years ago, and I still think this is the way to go. If you help people to have free access to internet, to information, then the government, uh, as it lost uh, part of its legitimacy, will be, be collapsing, at least at the point of very, very insiders, people close to the establishment.